so welcome to lecture 11 of uh, the solar photovoltaics course. So, we will just uh, first do a bit of recap of last lecture. So, in the last lecture we started talking about, uh, we talked about the band diagram of a semiconductor of P and N type semiconductors. We looked at the variation also, we looked at ki how Fermi level uh, are aligned in P and N type semiconductors, how do they vary as a function of uh, dopant concentration and uh, you, so we saw that in a P type semiconductor the Fermi level is closer to the valence band edge uh, below the intrinsic Fermi level and in the N type semiconductor Fermi level is above the Fermi level of intrinsic semiconductor that is slightly above the closer to the uh, conduction bandage and as it gets closer to conduction bandage upon doping or valence bandage upon doping uh, it tends to become uh, a like a metal. So, when the difference between the Fermi level of P or N type and the conduction or valence band edge, uh, valence or conduction band edge becomes less than 3 kT then the semiconductor becomes a degenerate semiconductor it becomes like a metal it behaves starts behaving like a metal. And then we also looked so we looked at for me energy versus uh, composition or let us say doping. And then we started a bit of discussion on uh, conduction in, in uh, semiconductors. So, in conduction in semiconductor the conductivity of a semiconductor is given as uh, so sigma n plus sigma p. So, it is for both n and p type carriers. So, sigma n uh, would be due to electrons which is because of n e uh, you can say q mu e uh, and this would be n h q into mu h. So, this would be the overall conductivity. So, for a so, we will we'll take this discussion, discussion forward in, the, in this lecture and uh, what we also did was we, we did a, a bit of um, discussion on what are the different types of uh, currents that you can have. So, you can have current due to drift and diffusion. Okay. So, we will again revisit some of these topics and further discuss these. So, as we saw that uh, drift current uh, is is equal to J. Uh, so, you can say J n is equal to n e q mu e into e because J we know is equal to sigma e according to Ohm's law. Okay. So, this is drift electron current and the drift peak hole current is n h q into mu p or mu h into e. So, you can write it as mu p or mu h these terms sometimes get interchanged. Okay. So, this is basically hole mobility and we also looked at in the last classes the variation of mobility with respect to doping and variation of mobility with respect to temperature. So, as you dope it further the mobility keeps dropping and as you increase the temperature again because of phonon scattering the mobility drops. So, J uh, drift current total drift current is so J drift total will be equal to J n drift plus J p drift. So, this is drift. So, this will be equal to N e q mu e e plus N h q mu p mu h into e. So, that will be the total uh, drift current that we will have for a semiconductor. So, based on this we can define now the resistivity So, resistivity basically so we write for conductivity we write J is equal to sigma E. So, this is in terms of conductivity okay. and in terms of resistivity we write E is equal to rho j. 
So, which means uh, sigma is equal to 1 over rho. So, basically resistivity is reciprocal of electrical conductivity. So, so you can say that uh, if J was equal to uh, N E mu E uh, Q E plus N A N H mu H Q E, if we take it out then this becomes N E mu E plus N H mu H into Q into E. So, this is a term which is sigma. So, reciprocal of this will be the resistivity. So, resistivity is 1 over Q into mu E N E plus mu H N H or N E mu E plus N H mu H. So, this is the electrical resistivity of semiconductors. Now, you can obviously see from this uh, if you have uh, For n type semiconductor, you know that uh, n e is equal to n d, which is a lot greater than n h, okay? right. So, as a result, the resistivity of a n type uh, material will be equal to 1 over q, um, you can say n d into mu e for a n type. right? Similarly, for a p type semiconductor, uh, since n h is equal to n a, which is a lot greater than n e, you can define rho as 1 over q n a into mu h. This is for p type semiconductor. Now, the way I mean of course, uh, so resistivity measurement in this case measurement of resistivity is basically uh, done using what we call as four probe method. four probe method. So, essentially four probe method is the one which uh, because metal and semiconductor often have contact resistance and for measurement of conductivity you would require metal contacts to be deposited. So, so to discount the effect of contact resistance in calculation of resistivity generally we use this four probe method instead of two probe method which is generally used for metals. So, what we have here is we have, uh, so if this is your, uh, if this is your wafer and on the surface of wafer you make four contacts equally spaced contacts. So, what we have here is, so we have four probes here. So, this is the first probe, this is the second probe okay. and from these you flow the current in. Okay. So, this is for I. So, current is flown in this fashion and these are the other two probes which are connected to a voltage measuring device. So, you measure the voltage across these. So, the, the spacing between these is S let us say Okay, so, the, you are using two probes for flowing the current in and outer inner, so outer two probes for current to flow and the inner two probes to measure the voltage. And this prevents you to, uh, this, uh, the, 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 the contact resistance which is between uh, the, the, the tip and the semiconductor because if you have, if you, you will have to deposit a metal contact pad at this point and often there is a contact resistance. To, to discount the contribution of voltage drop at that contact resistance, you use this four probe method. So, essentially the resistivity is computed as rho is equal to 2 pi s v divided by i into a factor f. Okay. 
I can write it differently. This is the factor f, and this factor f is basically calculated by by uh, doing the uh, by the plotting. So you can say that s is here probe to probe spacing. And uh, F is a, you can say a tabulated or graphed correction factor. So, if you do the measurements at various uh, voltages and currents, you can get this, and this depends upon sample thickness. and uh, whether the bottom of semiconducting. So, this is semiconductor here, this is the metal contact and this is the probe, metal probe. Okay. So, it is a so, it depends upon whether how is the bottom. So, whether this uh, So, on what surface is the semiconductor kept basically that is what. So, it is a easy method generally very useful method for measuring the uh, four probe resistance and the measurement of mobility is done through hall measurement. Okay. Hall measurement, which is basically you have a current carrying conductor and you apply the magnetic field. So, you basically measure the hall voltage or um, so basically based on hall effect. Capital A hall effect, and this will tell you whether uh, one it tells you whether semiconductor is P or N type. So, by the sign of the hall voltage, you can find out whether it is a P or N type semiconductor and secondly, you can one can determine the mobility, carrier mobility can be determined. So, hall effects, you can find any book on hall effect and this can do these measurements. Now, then we next we move to in, in semiconductors before we go to diffusion, you need to know about the energy, a few, a few things about energy band diagram. So, in semiconductors, so semiconductors band diagram and there are some terminal, there are some terminologies that you have to know. So, for example, if you have a semiconductor band diagram like this, this is your E c, this is your E v conduction band edge and the valence band edge and this is basically the distance x. Okay. So, as you go away up, up from E v to E c, the electron energy is basically increasing. So, this is total electron energy increasing. All right. And uh, if you have the representation of carriers is basically generally electron is depicted as a dot and a filled circle and hole is depicted as a empty circle. And uh, the carrier motion is opposite. So, if, if electron uh, if hole moves this way, electrons move this way, the motion is opposite and whole energy will decrease in this fashion. So, this is whole energy sorry increasing, this is whole energy increasing. Okay. This is increase in whole energy and uh, if you have a carrier, so 
So, if I draw another picture here. So, if you have a carrier for example, little bit above the valence band, then this much amount of energy which is available to the electron is basically the kinetic energy of electron. And if you have a hole sitting somewhere here, then with respect to E v, this much energy is the kinetic energy of hole. So, if you want to now measure for example, with respect to electron. So, this is the energy level at which electron is and let us say you have certain reference energy level okay, E ref. Then the potential energy of electron will be equal to, so this is the total energy right. of electron out of which this is the potential energy contribution and this is the kinetic energy contribution for electron. Another thing which is important in semiconductors is the band bending. Okay. Band bending generally happens because if you have differences for example, in electric field or if you have differences in um, any other thing. So, essentially let us say you have a um, if you have a so band bending can be represented by something like this. For example, if your semiconductor is non uniformly doped, if it is non uniformly doped which means its Fermi level will be different at different places. If its Fermi level is different at different places which means since Fermi level is different at different places, but chemically the material the thermodynamically material has to stay in equilibrium, which means uh, your material will have. So, you can have a situation like this in which Fermi level is equilibrated like this. So, this is the E f equilibrium. Okay. Oh, uh, I write it other way around, written another other way around. So, but you can see that in this side you have valence band being closer to Fermi level and this side you have conduction band being Fermi. Now, to equate the Fermi level on the two sides because you have two compositions on two sides, there has to be a band bending. So, this is where you see that there is a what we call as band bending at the interface. And this is because of differences in composition of two sides. Fermi level is different on one side, Fermi level is other, another on other on other side. But since they are connected to each other, chemically, uh, elect electrochemically speaking, material has to be at equilibrium thermodynamically. So to to ensure that material is at thermodynamic equilibrium, the Fermi level is at the same level throughout the material. But what it requires is that shifting of uh, the, the, the conduction and valence band will be in, uh, shifted in different parts of material in such a manner, so that you have band bending at the interface. So, this is the region at which, so this is you can say uh, in this region you can say it is p type, in this region you can say this is n type. So, if you have these composition differences, you can have another picture like this, uh, let us say you have minute you have a semiconductor piece of semiconductor in which the composition varies like this okay, as a function of distance let us say this is n d as a function of x. All right. If you want to plot for this how will you plot for this? So, what this will have is since this is varying n d is varying, but material will remain as thermodynamic equilibrium which means Fermi level will stay here. On this side the N d is higher on this side the N d is lower all right, which means the valence band will be farther on this side uh, so conduction band will be farther on this side and closer on this side. So, your this would be your energy band diagram sort of it is exaggerated, but this is this is the way you will have band bending taking place in the material of course, it is I do not know if it is N or P. I mean here it looks like as if you know you have gone from very n type to very p type, but this is how it will probably vary in a material. Okay. It may not be to this extent, if it is purely n type the, the slope may be uh, something like this. Uh, Let us say uh, 
a slope may be something like that. Okay. So, you can see again you have a band bending, band bending means you have some electric field here. So, basically you have an electric field here uh, in this region. I okay. will come to that. Uh, so, essentially in such a situation if you have band bending, then if you have a reference energy level is this E ref, then your potential energy is changing as a function of distance. The potential energy is something here and potential energy is something here. Right. So, basic, so you can say that P E in this case is equal to E C minus E ref. All right. Now, if potential energy is changing, what it means is that, so if I now draw the similar picture in such a fashion, and if I say P E is equal to E C minus E ref. Now, if I want to draw this is the E ref and this is what is P E is measured as. Okay. If I now uh, want to determine what is the potential V as a function of distance x, the potential goes as according to laws of electrostatistics minus 1 over q into E c minus E ref. Okay. This is the definition of potential on the uh, relating the electron energy with the voltage or potential. So, this goes as because potential is nothing but E divided by q, but q is negative, uh, it goes as negative of energy. So, this goes as basically you can see since this goes in this fashion, the potential will go in other fashion. So, it will go something like this fashion. Okay. Now, let us plot the electric field. This will be useful when you learn the p n junction. Electric field is minus of del V, right. So, electric field by definition is minus of del V. If you now plot the electric field, this is uh, so in this part it is 0, in this part it is 0. So, it is 0 here, it is 0 here, but it goes as something like this in this region like right? somewhere here you will have change of slope right so this is how electric field will plot itself now if you want to plot another thing which is called as charge density now we are plotting charge density which is proportional to de over dx so if you now want to plot charge density and if you again take this as a, so this will be essentially something like that, the charge density. Essentially you can see the negative charge density is equal to positive charge density within the band bending region. So, essentially electric field is symmetric here. So, total amount of negative charge is equal to total amount. solid has to be at the end electrically neutral which means total of positive and total negative charge should balance each other. So, that is what will happen here. Now, let us move to, so this is, so this is an important exercise how to draw the energy band diagram and from the energy band diagram how to determine the potential, how to determine the electric field, how to determine the charge density sorry this should be rho. Okay. And remember uh, potential energy is with respect to a reference and for electron it goes uh, increasing in the opposite in the up direction and for the hole it goes up and in, um, increase in the other direction. 
potential is minus of uh, uh, let us say delta E divided by Q or minus of E divided by Q. Uh, electric field is uh, you have to you have to watch out between the E for energy and E for electric field. So, maybe you can write this as in this fashion. So, the electric field is nothing but minus of del of V by definition and then charge density is proportional to uh, electric field gradient uh, d e by d x. So, these are the four definitions that you have to remember and this tells you how to draw the potential versus distance, energy uh, electric field versus distance and charge density versus distance for a semiconductor in its band. Now, let us move to the next uh, topic called as carrier diffusion. So, what we will do is that we will do the carrier diffusion in the next class. So, let me just summarize what we have done in this class. Um, So, in this class essentially we have looked at uh, carrier drift and resistivity which is inversely proportional to the conductivity. Then we looked at resistivity measurements which is made by four probe method. Then we, uh, then we briefly talked about mobility measurement which, which is done using Hall measurement. And then we looked at uh, the energy band diagrams uh, band bending, uh, plotting of uh, potential electric field and charge density. So, these are important exercises uh, you will have to do at some other systems considering other situations at home. I would recommend you to go through this book by Robert Pierre. Uh, semiconductor fundamentals volume 1 and advanced semiconductor fundamentals volume 6. You can also go through SMZ physics of semiconductor devices uh, this is again a very good book to give you idea about the semiconductors so these are few books which may be useful for you to improve upon your understanding of semiconductors in general especially these two volumes by pere semiconductor fundamentals volume 1 and semi advanced semiconductor fundamental volume 6 these are really good books for improving your understanding of semiconductors. Okay. So, we will stop here, we will do the next lecture in which we will learn about the diffusion. Thank you.